Oh, my name is Pat Lampe and I'm the director of the Alaska Zoo and years ago while I was a curator, Chris Flynn used to work for me as uh, one of the keepers here at the zoo. Something I can say about Chris is the probably the hardest thing was keeping Chris out of the cages with the animals. I don't think there was an animal that he wouldn't have gone in with if he was given a chance, but of course for safety reasons we couldn't do that. But uh, I think you got your man here for, for this new gig. Hey, well hello there. My name's Chris Flynn. I uh, live in Girdwood, Alaska. I was born and raised here in Alaska and I've been involved in radio and television since I left high school. I'm 41 now, so that's quite a lot of experience. Uh, involved in production and working with teams and I know how these kinds of shows sort of go together and so I can definitely be a contributing factor to your team. Um, I heard about this show audition and I was more excited than I've ever been for any one of these sort of reality type shows. I've thought about auditioning for Survivor. It'd be more fun to be on the crew probably. Um, but this one is just like custom made for me. How to survive wild dangerous animal encounters. What a load of fun! I mean if you guys, if you guys are going to fly me all over the world and hook me up with like Siberian tigers I can wrestle with? Please, that'd be fantastic. I would love that a lot. Um, anyway, uh, you want to hear about one of my dangerous animal encounters, and so I'm going to tell you about a grizzly bear encounter that I had a few years ago in Anchorage. Campbell Creek passes through Anchorage, and the Iditarod Trail crosses it at a point that's about a mile off of the road, just so close to town. I went biking back to this spot because I knew there were some baby salmon in there, and I wanted to just observe them and watch them feeding and doing their thing. So of course all the way back to the location I'm yelling, no bears, no bears, because that's the best way to keep a bear from you know, coming up on you accidentally and being surprised is to let them know that you're there and they probably don't want to encounter you any more than you want to encounter them. So I get to the spot and then I'm crouched down in the creek and I'm counting these fish and I'm looking at what they're doing and I completely forgot about making noise, but I was still paying attention to my surroundings and I heard what sounded like some people coming up the trail. And then it sounded like they had a dog with them. I heard some snuffling. And then I look up, and across the creek, well, there's a bear's nose coming around some grass. And its nose is to the ground, and it's sniffing, and then the body emerges, and it's a big six to eight hundred pound silverback grizzly bear. And I'm thinking, oh no, I'm going to get beat up in the creek here. It might drown or get really badly injured. And the bear moves closer and closer, and uh, sniffing the ground, and then it looks up at me. And it goes, and uh, I know that that is just a greeting for predators. And a lot of other animals too. A lot of big animals just do that. They call it chuffing. And it just means, hey, what are you doing? Who are you? What are you doing here? What's your intentions? I could have reacted any number of ways in that moment. I could have said, hey, bear, if you take off and come back later, I'll be gone. Thanks for letting me check your spot out and been calm about it. But the overwhelming thought in my mind, even though I knew better, was get up and run. And I stood up, and the bear's muscles all went into action, just churning, and I could see its teeth and its nostrils, and it's looking me right in the eyes. And it's a uh, low head, head low to the ground, not a bluff charge at all. And I go, bang, bang, bang! And the bear spun around in place, spitting gravel out from behind it, and ran back off. The whole thing probably lasted two or three seconds, but I can't believe how much went through my mind in that moment and that overriding uh, sense of panic uh, really could have been my demise and so I guess that my one uh, tip to pass on right now would be keep a clear head don't panic if you get into a situ situation like that you've got to rehearse in your mind what you're going to do so that you automatically know what to do if I hadn't known not to turn and run I would have tried to turn and run and I would probably not be here talking to you today so Gosh, it is great to talk to you. Thanks so much for your time. I hope you choose to uh, interview me further. And uh, God, I would just so love to do this show. Thanks for your time. While I'm crouched down there, I hear some people coming. At least I thought it was people. It turned out that it wasn't people. It was a grizzly bear. I looked up and right on the other side of the creek, across the creek, oh, my phone's ringing now, excuse me. Damn it. Hello, it's Chris. 